we know tonight about the death of a local middle school student and what role COVID-19 may have played. Also, there's still more to be done to help Afghan refugees at Fort McCoy, what they still need and how you can help the cause. Also, how a federal program helped the family of an area beloved school superintendent at their time of grief. That's just ahead on News 3 Now at 10. And we thank you for joining us. DHS today out with new data showing unvaccinated people in Wisconsin are nearly four times more likely to get COVID-19 and more than 10 times more likely to die from it. We have an in-depth breakdown of those numbers. You can see those new numbers at channel3000.com. And in Fort Atkinson, we are told doctors believe COVID played a role in a young boy's death. 13-year-old Danny Rees died on Tuesday. His mother said he was congested and suddenly stopped breathing. He ended up testing positive for COVID. Doctors say the virus played a role, but it was not the sole cause. Danny was in seventh grade at Fort Atkinson Middle School. Staff said they are extremely saddened by this death. They're offering support to students staff and the family. The rest of Danny's family has since tested positive for the virus. That's a topic mentioned during public comment at the Fort Atkinson School Board meeting tonight, which was packed with divided parents. Like many others in the area, the district didn't have a mask requirement, at least going into the meeting. Madeline O'Neill is live in Fort Atkinson with the latest developments and why parents and health officials are worried schools across Jefferson County are not doing enough to keep students safe. Maddie? Board members just voted to enact this mask requirement going through late October. Now, board members talked about how this was a difficult decision, but during the vote, we heard just one nay. And of course, we've heard about these contentious school board meetings all over, including locally here. And I can tell you tonight was no different. Dozens of people signed up to give public comment fairly split on whether they support or are against this mask policy. We heard from people strongly opposed to the man or to the requirement calling this a matter of freedom rather than safety but we also heard emotional pleas from the other side as well including Jennifer Slack who just pulled her young daughter out of school in the district concerned about safety with more and more COVID cases in schools make a motion to amend our current practices to include contact tracing, quarantining of exposed children, and most importantly, a mask requirement. That's really the least we can do for some of the most important people in our lives. Thank you. I don't think um, you should be guilted, pressured into making choices for everybody. We all need to take charge and make our own choices whether to mask our children or not. COVID cases are on the rise in the entire county, and Sam Rose Jack Bonnie with the Jefferson County Health Department attributes that largely to school spread, saying they can hardly keep up with the new cases. He says the lack of masking and quarantining policies at schools is reckless and endangers students, and his messages at school board meetings, he says, have been falling on deaf ears, sometimes being met with boos and jeers. To see that we are conveying to them the risk and conveying to them the guidance, and letting them know of what they can do quite easily to prevent the spread occurring in schools. And then to see them cast their votes uh, as a no and to see them say we're gonna do away with all of this um, and essentially pretend that COVID-19 isn't real is, is absolutely devastating. Now without mask, ma mask wearing, a close contact to a COVID case can be considered the entire classroom if they're there long enough, enough Jack Vanney says. While DHS guidance recommends unvaccinated close contacts quarantine, that wasn't the case at the start of today at schools including Johnson Creek and Waterloo. But Waterloo is once again quarantining close contacts and now requiring masks as well starting next Tuesday until October 21st after a directive from Jefferson County just this afternoon. At tonight's meeting we heard more than or nearly two hours of public comment and police were there the school says that's just as a proactive measure during these October and September board meetings uh, during the public comment one woman did bring up the seventh grader who died asking others not to use this recent tragic death in any arguments this evening we did see one woman thrown out of the meeting for being disruptive 
Maddie O'Neill reporting live tonight. Madeline, thank you. And tonight we're learning that Madison West High School has canceled the next two weeks of varsity football games due to health and safety protocols. They were set to face Middleton tomorrow and Sun Prairie next week. Yesterday, we told you that the Madison School District reported 83 confirmed cases of COVID, more than 400 who are close contacts and in quarantine, and about a third of those students are from Madison West. When we look at the overall vaccination rates, more than half of the state's eligible population has gotten the shot, but doctors want that number to be much higher especially since COVID activity remains high throughout the state. And Dane County, still the leader in the country. Just this week, it became the first county in Wisconsin to have 70% of residents fully vaccinated. Getting a look outside in downtown Madison, it's a beautiful night capping off a very nice day, but there is some rain on the way. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti has our certified most accurate forecast. Gary? Well, Charlotte, we are looking for some rain tomorrow afternoon, but even the very latest computer models have been backing off on that a little bit. I think some of us will get some rain, but others may still stay dry. Time lapse from the WISC sky cam shows everybody stayed dry today. There wasn't a cloud in the sky from sunup till sundown. We just stayed clear. The uh, Humidity levels are low, and so even though it was warm, temperatures are comfortable. Uh, Doppler track right now shows no precipitation across much of the state of Wisconsin. There are some thunderstorms into far northwestern Wisconsin, but those storms that have been severe in Minnesota are weakening pretty rapidly because the air across Wisconsin is drier. With the dry air this morning, we started out around 50 degrees here in Madison, but notice high temperatures, about 30 degrees warmer than the overnight low temperatures, and the dry air warms up quickly. Tonight, temperatures are in the uh, mid-60s to near 70 degrees by tomorrow morning because of some Southerly winds will only drop to about 59, and tomorrow the clouds will, will move in, and there'll be a chance for some showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon with a high of 78, but dry weather's on the way for the weekend, along with a warm-up. We'll have more details on that in just a few minutes. We're again hearing directly from Afghan refugees inside Fort McCoy. The story they tell us is one of gratitude for escape, fear of the unknown, and one issue we haven't heard about yet, health care concerns. We spoke with three refugees, a daughter, her mother, and a friend who helped translate. The daughter was a journalist in Afghanistan, and she told us to use her name. However, we're not identifying her friend who helped translate. They've been here now for two weeks, and they say issues like food and recreation are good, but they have concerns about health care. So her mother has a heart disease first and a high blood pressure. Blood pressure. The, the doctor said to me that no problem with her heart. Your big con problem is yet that you have stress. You're concerning about everything. That's why you're facing such problems. Nabila's mother, who was there during our interview, was diagnosed with heart disease and high blood pressure in Afghanistan. She had a medical emergency on the packed evacuation flight from Afghanistan to Qatar. In several text messages today, Nabila says they are also in need of more clothing. And that's what one group is focusing on, making sure refugees are ready for a Wisconsin winter. Team Rubicon's veteran volunteers are working seven days a week, eight hours a day, to sort through thousands of donation items already at the base. Now, if you're interested in donating, the main things you're looking for now, adult winter clothing, sizes medium and smaller, winter footwear for men's sizes 7 to 9, women's sizes 5 to 7, and all sizes for children. Security fences are back up around the nation's capital. The U.S. Capitol Police Board has approved the department's request to erect the temporary fencing ahead of a right-wing Justice for J6 rally that's planned for Saturday. The authorities are worried the event could result in similar violence seen back on January 6th. The police chief says the fence should come down shortly after the weekend. Next at 10, the 15-year-old arrested in connection with the Beloit homicide over the Labor Day weekend is now charged. Police have identified him as Dante Wilson. He's been charged as an adult with three counts, including first-degree intentional homicide. Wilson was arrested at Beloit Memorial High School on Monday. Police say they found a gun in his bag at the time of the arrest. Up in northwestern Wisconsin, police have a suspect in custody in connection with the quadruple homicide and are still still searching for a second. The Dunn County Sheriff's Office said 56-year-old Darren Lee McWright was uh, from St. Paul was arrested in Minnesota. The second suspect, 38-year-old Antoine Suggs, also from St. Paul, is still on the loose. This follows an investigation where four people were found dead in an abandoned SUV in a Dunn County cornfield about 30 miles northwest of Eau Claire over the weekend. The victims, two men and two women, were also all from Minnesota and have no connection to the area where they were found. 
Police believe the location was chosen at random. Well, check it out. Madison's Lake Rescue Team spent some time this morning recovering an overturned sailboat on Lake Mendota. This video was taken from our Edgewater Sky Cam. The boat was towed to the docks just outside the Memorial Union, and we are told there are no injuries. And Wisconsin's longest serving governor needed surgery today after a water skiing accident. Tommy Thompson posted about the arm injury from his accident on Facebook today. He's currently the interim president for the UW system. The Board of Regents searching for a permanent president to eventually replace him. Well, it appears Jeopardy has finally settled on the host of the show, at least until the end of the year. Today, Sony Pictures Entertainment announced Ken Jennings will join actress Mayim Bialik in hosting duties for the quiz show this year. Jennings gained national fame from Jeopardy in 2004 after his unprecedented 74-game victory streak. Still to come tonight, a look ahead at your weekend forecast and if tomorrow night's high school football games could be impacted. But first, a News 3 Now exclusive, how a federal agency is helping a local family after losing a beloved school superintendent to COVID-19. That's next. This is a Wisconsin brewmaster. He brews the local craft beer. The beer that washes down the Oktoberfest broth. The broth that pairs with the potato salad. The potato salad that befriends the burger. The burger that tastes like victory. Festival foods. We are Wisconsin. At Culver's, we never tire of crafting fresh frozen custard right in our restaurants. As soon as I'm like, who wants Culver's custard? The kids are already running out the door. Hello, everybody. Hi. Here's your custard. Always rich and creamy, always sure to put a smile on your face. It's more than just a special treat. It's creating memories with my children and family time. Is it really good? <laughs> yeah. Family time is custard time. Welcome to Delicious. Is your credit score getting in the way of things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit help you borrow up to $10,000. So check your eligibility on netcredit.com today without affecting your credit score. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. No one has ever reinvented mattress shopping until now. The grand opening of Slumberland Sleep Solutions, where we've simplified, uncomplicated, and laid things out for you. Start with a quick rest match to pick your basic mattress type. You love memory foam. I really do. Then shop the information and rating system on each bed. Did you know you can get great back support with a soft feel? It's true and easy to find. Mattress shopping. Reinvented. Only at Slumberland Furniture. Here's the secret we're sharing. Robertson, Wisconsin's aesthetic leader, has nurses that specialize in custom treatment plans. Always natural, never overfilled. Schedule your complimentary consultation now. It's time to learn how aging is different at Robertson. This is Ford Truck Month. Time to take a ride in the all-new 2021 Ford F-150 with an available 12-inch touchscreen, an available interior work surface, and for powerful performance on demand, a class-exclusive available Pro Power onboard mobile generator. These are America's best-selling trucks. This is Ford Truck Month. Inventory levels are coming back up, making Truck Month the time to get an F-150 with 0 for 72 and 1,000 retail order bonus. This is a Wisconsin farmer. She grows the locally sourced freshness, the freshness that complements the wild-caught salmon, the salmon that tees up the cheesecake, the cheesecake that sweetens every moment. Festival Foods, we are Wisconsin. Friday on News 3 Now This Morning, we are kicking off Madison Restaurant Week. We'll share how you can watch and win a free voucher to put towards your meal. And Chris Reese is tracking the chance of storms before Friday Night Football. We'll see you from 4.30 to 7.00. You are watching News 3 Now at 10. Winner of the National Edward R. Murrow Award for Overall Excellence in Television. And welcome back. The federal government is offering much needed help to families who lost a loved one to COVID-19. The money is being offered through FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Susan Simon explains how to apply and what the money means to a local family who suffered a terrible loss. He was a wonderful man. Um, he was very humble. He was a great family man. For Pam Bark and many others in the Green Lake County community of Marquezan, the return of a new school year has been bittersweet. He was a man of faith and he had a 
really good sense of humor. Last summer, Marquezan's beloved superintendent, teacher, and football coach, Dwayne Bark, started showing symptoms of COVID-19. Dwayne ended up getting tested. He was positive. It was on Monday. Um, by Thursday, I believe, I ended up in the hospital. Uh, the next day, my mom, who was living with us at that time, went into the hospital, and the day after, my daughter went into the hospital. Pam and her mother spent three weeks in the hospital, but it was Dwayne who was hit the hardest. His condition started to deteriorate even more, and one morning they came in and said, we we're going to have to um, induce a coma and put you on the... Um, ventilator. Dwayne fought for three months on a ventilator in the ICU. He passed away October 7th, 2020, at the age of 61. The last moment before he passed, he opened his eyes and looked up at the up at heaven and took a deep breath and he had tears coming out of his eyes. And I think that was beautiful. Pam held a memorial service in July and made sure it was a celebration of Dwayne's life, whatever the cost. There's a lot of hidden expenses. There's hidden expenses with a burial plot, with a tombstone. Those are things people don't always look at because they think that they're going to have time down the road. The families that are actually having to apply for these monies, it, this money's coming out of their direct pocket. Jim Wolf is the president of the Wisconsin Funeral Directors Association Association and owner of Apfel Wolf Funeral Home in Janesville. What is the average cost of a funeral today? If we're talking like a full casketed remains kind of funeral, a burial in a local cemetery or a cemetery, we're anywhere from the ballpark of $11,000 to $15,000. Funeral assistance available from FEMA has been extended indefinitely. Eligible applicants can receive up to $9,000 for reimbursement of funeral costs. There's no deadline to apply, but there's also no reason to wait. Dan Schulman is a FEMA spokesman. Individuals will need to submit a number of pieces of documentation. First and foremost will be a death certificate for the person that they lost, whose funeral expenses they paid for. The only time restriction is that the death has to have occurred after January 20th, 2020. This is the first time the federal agency is using a call-in only application process with FEMA's toll-free number. This is a completely manual process. You will talk to someone when you call. It's not an automated system. Uh, the current wait time to get connected to a live operator is less than a minute. FEMA has provided over a billion dollars so far to assist with funeral costs. Almost $19 million of that has gone to Wisconsin. If you unfortunately lost someone, paid for a funeral in Wisconsin uh, as a result of COVID-19, please call us, get registered, and let us work through, work through your application. We can't bring your loved one back, but we can help ease the burden of their loss. Life is unpredictable. Don't put off that bucket list. Don't put off that vacation. Um, don't put off anything, you know, just because the timing isn't right. Until you lose somebody so close, you have no, I don't think anyone has any idea how it tears you up inside. And that was Susan Simon reporting. The toll-free number to apply for FEMA funeral assistance is on your screen. It is 844-684-6333. Pam is in the process of writing a book about her experience to help people through the COVID grieving process. And here's Gary now with a look at your certified most accurate forecast. Well, we might see some rain tomorrow, Gary. Yeah, but not an all-day rain, and I think the best chances of rain will be in the afternoon. So hopefully the high school football game shouldn't be affected by it. The rain probably wouldn't stop the game. It's just a question of whether or not there's lightning around, and we can't rule out at least a few thunderstorms tomorrow. So, uh, and three things you need to know. The best chances for thunderstorms will be tomorrow afternoon. Sunny skies return for Saturday and Sunday, so any games on Saturday, not a problem. And uh, Sunday temperatures will be even warmer. In fact,
next Sunday and Monday. I'm looking for high temperatures in the middle 80s. The average high temperature right now is in the lower 70s. Tonight, some showers and thunderstorms to our north and west. Some of these have been strong to severe over parts of Minnesota earlier this evening. All watches have been canceled there as the storms weaken as they push into northern Wisconsin. The air across our state is quite a bit drier, and the showers and thunderstorms that come through tomorrow aren't going to bring a lot of rain. Uh, tonight, the activity to our north and west bringing a half inch to an inch of rain in spots. By the time those storms reach us tomorrow afternoon, probably less than a tenth of an inch in most areas. Some areas uh, might even miss out on the rain altogether. Areas that get a thunderstorm might see around a quarter of an inch of rain. But we could use the rain. Uh, we're not looking at much for the next couple of days into the weekend. And then as we head into the early part of next week, some shower and thunderstorm chances about Tuesday. That might bring an additional tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain. And even by the end of the week, not much additional rainfall. So you go all the way through next weekend and we're looking at about a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain through much of southern Wisconsin. This is the time of year we normally get about three quarters of an inch of rain per week. So we or less than that. We just continue to keep the drought going and that's exactly what we have. Moderate drought conditions from Madison southward according to the U.S. Drought Monitor have normally dry conditions in northern Dane County and much of southwestern and, and uh, east central Wisconsin. Central and northern parts of the state for the most part are in pretty good shape although drought conditions again starting to occur up near Lake Superior and getting very bad across northern Minnesota. High temperatures today lower 80s here again above normal but comfortably warm to the south and west summer heat still continues to hold on with temperatures in the mid 90s over parts of central Nebraska and western Kansas. But there is a cold front coming in from the north and west. That's where these showers and thunderstorms have been developing. But with a northwesterly wind flow and not a, a flow off of the Gulf of Mexico, there's not a lot of moisture for these showers and storms, so they're not going to be very widespread. Surface weather map shows that cold front just to our north and west. Winds shift around to the north behind the front. Ahead of the front, winds out of the south, keeping temperatures in the 60s and 70s here. Still 81 in the Twin Cities, but behind the front, notice the drop off in temperatures at night. It'll get a little cooler, especially across uh, the, uh, the northern portion of the state. 78 for a high tomorrow, becoming cloudy. Maybe some shower and thunderstorm chances in the afternoon. On future track, beginning at 6 a.m., you can see some showers and storms to our north and west. The first batch kind of fizzled. The next batch comes through during the afternoon. Then by tomorrow evening, we're just left with some clouds, and even those clear out tomorrow night, and that sets up nice weather for the weekend. Rainfall amounts, like I said, where it occurs, probably less than a tenth of an inch unless you get a heavier thunderstorm. 7 to 10 day forecast, those temperatures warm for Sunday and Monday. Shower and thunderstorm chances Tuesday, and then the uh, start of fall on Wednesday. Temperatures pretty close to average for the end of next week. And just that in sports, as Aaron Rodgers once said, R-E-L-A-X. Week one wasn't good, but while the Packer QB says, it's nothing to worry about. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Sausage biscuit or a sausage McMuffin paired with hash browns. Each bundle just two dollars. Back by popular demand, Hy-Vee drive-through flu shot clinics. Just follow the signs in your Hy-Vee parking lot to get your flu shot right from your car. It's easy, convenient, and no appointment or prescription is necessary. Drive-through flu shots are offered on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 7 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Or get your flu shot inside your Hy-Vee pharmacy at any time with no appointment necessary. Plus, when you get your flu shot at Hy-Vee, you get a 20-cent Hy-Vee fuel saver. Here's today's hot and perfect tip. Run in place at all times. Don't follow extreme routines. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness. Now through September 16th, join for just $1 down, $10 a month, and cancel anytime. With tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Don't miss out. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month, cancel anytime. Hurry, deal ends September 16th. Five Madison area locations. Stop in today. When an inland hurricane called the Derecho cut a path through the Midwest, we learned some lessons. We learned that most buildings cannot withstand 140 mile per hour winds, not to mention most oak trees. We learned that when your roof is gone or there's a tree in your living room, even eight hours is too long to wait. But most of all, we learned that in hardship, people take care of each other. And that has been our silver lining. The light at the end of the tunnel isn't shining so brightly for everyone. 
Families continue to fight for survival. Some jobs are gone forever. Bills pile up. But please know, you have not been forgotten. Your local Wisconsin energy and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your heat and power on. Apply now for a hand up. It's Chevy Truck Month, and it's time to add the perfect accessories to your new Chevy. Make it bolder. Make it work harder. Make it your own. Find new possibilities. Find new roads. Get great offers from GM Financial and 1750 cash allowance on Silverado 1500 Crew Cab pickups. Plus, now during Truck Month, get a $1,000 accessory allowance towards the purchase of eligible accessories. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. What does it mean to fight for what's right? To us, it means helping accident victims get their lives back to normal again. Habish, Habish, and Rotier. We fight for what's right. The Packers' week one performance against the Saints was downright ugly. Aaron Rodgers, the two picks, while the team lost by 35. Well, let's take a step back and remember, it's just the first game. There are 16 games left, so now isn't the time to push that panic button. And the only thing Rodgers plans to change, well, play a little bit better. There shouldn't be some big drastic change and alteration in the way that we do things, the way we practice, the way we prepare. If it's good enough to get you to this point, then it's good enough uh, from this point forward. So uh, I haven't changed any of the stuff that I've been doing. Um, obviously, you know, we got to play better. But if we're starting to freak out after one week, uh, we're in big trouble. Like most football coaches, Brett St. Arnold has his practices scheduled down to the second. But at Mount Horror Barneveld, he makes sure to make time for the bigger picture. Each week, St. Arnold introduces his team to a theme, and it's when the Vikings take beyond their next opponent. Mount Hora Barnevelt football is built on hard work. We've never been that big school that has a bunch of big guys. This season, that work is paying off. In four weeks, the Vikings have four wins. That's two more than the last two years combined. Get on it. Get on it. Fun to win football games. Yeah, missed it. But thanks to Brett St. Arnold. Set. Firmly believe to this day, you learn more about life between between these white marks and he's on a, on a football field than anywhere else, truly do. It's more than football for this group. Well, we have a theme of the week every week, so it kind of helps us get our mindset right. A theme. Stick and burst. Good. That the team applies to their opponent and to life. We got the number one team in the D3, so we're trying to see if we're worthy enough to play with them and beat them. This week's theme? Worthy or unworthy. Worthy. Worthy or unworthy. Worthy. Bring it in here, let's go. Worthy or unworthy. Are you worthy for the challenge? Are you going to step up and accept the challenge, or are you going to run away? We got to step up. All those challenges that they're going to face, all I really am trying to get them to do is have a leg up and be prepared for them so they're not blindsided by them. And be worthy and ready Good. for whatever hits them in life. There you go. Keep moving. To nominate your coach to be our next Coach of the Week, head over to the sports page at channel3000.com. Click on the Coach of the Week banner and fill out that nomination form, or you can send me an email. High school boys soccer, Oregon hosting Monona Grove. Early first half, the Panthers strike first. Noah Malcook hammers one home off the free kick to give Oregon a 1-0 lead. Then later in the first half, more Panthers. Alex Rodriguez goes between the legs of his defender, and Malcook does what he does. His second goal of the night makes it 2-0. Oregon gets the shutout, 4-0 the final. We're back after this. enough to think about maintaining. Good thing the 2021 Volkswagen Atlas and Atlas Crossport have a lower cost of maintenance than Toyota Highlander. Come into your Volkswagen dealer today and lease the spacious and refined 2021 Atlas SE Tech with 4Motion for just $4.49 a month. What do you think? I love it. Tosh 
Nation. Did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Aw, uh, fresh vanilla, rocky roll, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough. today and see all the ways you could save. Madison Magazine's Fall Restaurant Week 2021 is here. Participating restaurants will provide a three-course lunch starting at $15 and a three-course dinner starting at $25, featuring wine and more. Don't miss Madison Magazine's Fall Restaurant Week 2021, starting September 19th through the 24th. For participating restaurant menus and details, visit madisonrestaurantweek.com. Presenting sponsor, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund. Supporting sponsor, Ian J. Gallo Winery. Is your credit score getting in the way of the things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit offer fast and flexible lending. Borrow up to $10,000 and choose repayment terms that work for you. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. This is... This is Iowa. We just haven't been properly introduced. Say hello to the place where rolling hills meet slow bills, where our fields, inside and out, are always growing, and where the fun is just getting started. This is Iowa. So, when are you coming to see us? News 3 Now's call for action gets answers when you can't. A COVID patient's care jeopardized by insurance denials. After we contacted Aetna, the company reversed course. News 3 Now's call for action. Taking action for you. You've got enough to think about maintaining. Good thing the 2021 Volkswagen Atlas and Atlas Crossport have a lower cost of maintenance than Toyota Highlander. Come into your Volkswagen dealer today and lease the stylish and versatile 2021 Atlas Crossport SE Tech with 4Motion for just $4.39 a month. Join me in the 608 weekdays on News 3 Now this morning. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Let's go back to Gary. One final check of the forecast. Beautiful evening out there tonight. Skies are clear. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam. Just a pretty one out there. Some showers and thunderstorms to our north and west, but notice how there are breaks now between the storms. That's kind of what the radar will look like tomorrow afternoon when this, these storms come through southern Wisconsin. So a few people may get thunderstorms, a few people may get showers, and other people may miss out on the rain altogether. Temperatures right now, upper 60s here in Madison, still in the 70s toward the Mississippi River. Look for an overnight low temperature tonight of about 59. High tomorrow, 78. Clouds and a shower or thunderstorm chance in the afternoon, but then dry weather for the weekend, highs mid-80s Sunday and Monday, and then temperatures back closer to normal beginning for the start of fall on Wednesday. All right, Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.